Students continue to show their talent, not only in extracurricular activities, but also in the classroom. Students are really having fun in ceramics. This is Madison Kemper on location. In first and third, third period art. Today I'm interviewing Mr. Williams, PG's art teacher. Why did you, uh, pottery in class, why not just stick to more 2D, like traditional two-dimensional medium, like painting or drawing? Well, we have to do three-dimensional things um, for state standards and for state curriculum. The other thing is important that artists do work um, three-dimensionally also as well as two-dimensionally. So pottery, or working in clay, is an easy way to work in a three-dimensional media and still you know, kind of meet what the state says we have to do. And some kids find it enjoyable to work in clay or work on the pottery wheel. Um, so I think it's a, a combination of uh, all those things. And I, uh, I noticed that your pottery wheels were cleaner. Yeah, we, we, every once in a while we'll clean them up just because the clay does build up. Um, the students are supposed to clean up after they use it, but that doesn't happen. So uh, every once in a while we'll just decide to take a day and just really clean them up so they they look nicer. They you know, perform not any better, but they just look nicer and the clay doesn't build up. It's just a better, just a better idea. Um, has any of your previous students pursued a career? Yeah, I have a lot of uh, former students who are both art teachers. Um, three of in the county um, here alone. Um, I've got several who are art therapists. Um, I have several of them that work um, uh, in the art field as far as graphic design in Lima and Finley. Um, so a lot of my students have moved on and used art as a career and are making a living at it. So that's rewarding for me to know that the kids like the class well enough uh, to continue and then have an interest that their whole life art will affect them. You know, if you're, if you're a true artist, it never goes away. You live, eat, breathe, think, read art stuff, projects, pictures, um, and it can be a vocation, it can be a job. It can pay, can pay pretty well. So, yes, I've had lots of students who are art as a career. I'd like to say that's rewarding to me. Well, thank you for letting me You're welcome. Always a good time. Students at PG not only make masterpieces, but they also teach each other. Today, in Mrs. Schrader's AP English class, they were presenting and teaching their classmates about an influential person during the Harlem Renaissance. Zane Traxler was presenting information about Paul Robeson. Let's take a look. At the age of seven, his mother died of a heart attack. It was very um, stressful on him and kind of burdened him and kept him down. But uh, his father and the rest of his family moved to Somerville, where Paul was very well excelled academically. He was a very intelligent person. Kind of reminds me of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Education. At the age of 17, so most of us, he won a scholarship to Rutgers. At the time, Rutgers was pretty prestigious. So um, he was actually the third African American to get that. So that was also pretty cool, too. So um, he graduated as a valedictorian. Very smart kid, like I said. Uh, attended Columbia University, then went on to law. You guys, law agree? Thank you, Katie. Now to the cooking corn with Carlista and our special guest, Autumn. Today for our cooking segment, we have Autumn Sprunger. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, what will we be baking today? Well, since Valentine's Day is just around the corner, we're going to be making Valentine's Day Nutella brownie. Sounds delicious. Let's get started. First, preheat your oven to 350. First, add in a cup and a half of flour. Now add in a whole small container of Nutella. Now we're gonna crack three eggs.
Next, just pour your mixture into a 9 by 13 pan. Now put it in your oven to bake for 25 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today. We'll see you next time at the Rocket Corner.